Hello everyone, my name is Liam and I'll be your speaker for today. Today I will be talking about spring migration in and around Victoria, BC. I will be taking a look at just some of the songbirds that we see here between the months April, May, and June. These species often travel thousands of kilometers from different parts of the US, Mexico, and even South America. They come here just to raise their young and spend the summer. I will not only be talking about what they look like, but what they sound like. Please join me as we take a look at these incredible species. How do you know when it's spring? The days are getting longer, the weather is warmer, flowers are blooming, trees are blossoming, and the butterflies are out. But you can also tell when the swallows arrive. We have six different species here in Victoria, all of which show up right around the beginning of March. This beautiful swallow, called a violet green swallow, usually starts arriving at the beginning of March. They're very common across Victoria in the spring and summer, and you'll generally find them at any sort of wetland or fielded areas, whether that be farms, lakes, or marshes. You can tell it's a violet green swallow because of the nice green back and the violet or purple tail. Also notice the white behind the eye. This is one of the only species that we get here that has white behind the eye like that. This swallow is called the tree swallow. It too arrives at the beginning of March, but isn't as common as the violet green. Notice that both of these swallows have a white belly, but the back color is different. Tree swallows are nice and blue and violet greens have green and purple. And also behind the eye on the tree swallow, there is no white. It's just a clean line across from the bill to the back of the head. You can often find these guys around wetlands and lakes. This swallow, called the barn swallow, also arrives in early March. They become just as common as violet green swallows, and you can often see them at wetlands, lakes, and fields. Unlike the tree and violet green swallow, the barn swallow has a nice orange belly and red on its face. They also have a long forked tail. You can see in the upper right, of one in flight, it has two long points extending out of the tail. Here's the tree swallow, it has a flattish tail. And here's the violet green, it also has a flattish tail. And the violet green has a white belly, tree has a white belly, and barn has an orangish belly. So where are these birds traveling from? Most have actually spent the winter down in southern parts of the world, whether that be Central America, Mexico, or South America. They use the night time to travel. So you can see on the right here, all that blue is birds. This was recorded just a few weeks ago in Victoria and parts of, the, uh, parts of Washington. And you can see daytime, seven o'clock, eight o'clock and then nine o'clock, all of a sudden it turns blue. That's when the birds are taking off to move northward. Another sign of when spring is returned is when we get our rufous hummingbirds. We have two species of hummingbird on Vancouver Island. The Anna's hummingbird, and the rufous hummingbird. The Anna's hummingbird is extremely common. Found pretty much anywhere in Victoria, this species can be seen throughout the summer and throughout the winter. Males are tiny, mostly green, and have a pink iridescent head. Interestingly, they start to nest in January and February, unlike the rufous hummingbirds, which start to nest usually around April and May. The song of the Anna's hummingbird is thin, wavery, and a bit scratchy. Here's what it sounds like. Now, Anna's hummingbirds also do a display where they hover in one spot, slowly go up into the air, and then do a dive really, really fast. And right at the bottom of their dive, they spread out their tail feathers. And because the air rushing over the tail feathers is so fast, it creates this high pitched peak noise. Here's what that sounds like. The roof is hummingbird just like the swallows is another sign that spring is here. These guys have spent the winter in Mexico and start to arrive in mid-March to spend the summer. You can often see them in well-forested areas such as Goldstream and Prospect Lake where there's early flowering plants. Their tiny size, orange body, and bright orangey red iridescent feathers on the throat are a good way to tell them apart from Anna's. Here's the Anna's hummingbird and here's the rufus. You can really see the difference. 
Also, the rufous hummingbirds don't really have a song, but they'll often give out chips and buzzes. Here's what their display sounds like, and you can often hear them in the forest buzzing by. Now, moving on to some of the other songbirds. Common migrants first. There are approximately 30 species of songbird that migrate from the US, Central America, and South America. They spend the summer here, and not all of them arrive at the same time. Some arrive in April, others arrive at the end of May, sometimes even the beginning of June. Also, not every single bird that arrives here is gonna stay and breed. Some will arrive early and keep continuing north to Alaska, and others will arrive late and stay here for the summer. First, I'll start with the orange crown warbler. These birds arrive in early April and quickly become one of the most common breeding birds here in Victoria. They prefer any sort of Gary Oak Meadows or forested areas. Males are olive yellow with a thin silver bill, dark eye stripe, plain wings, and have a bit of orange on the crown. Their song is a short musical trill that usually descends right at the end or sometimes slows down. Here's what it sounds like. We actually get two different types of yellow rump warblers, the myrtle subspecies and the Audubon subspecies. Audubons have a yellow throat, no mask, and no eyebrow. Myrtles have a white throat, white eyebrow, and a dark mask. You can see the difference in the bottom photo. The song is a slow, sweet, whistly warble that rises up. This beautiful bird is called the Townsend's Warbler. They usually arrive at the end of April to the beginning of May and are an uncommon breeder here in Victoria. Anywhere where there's large conifer forests, you can usually hear them singing from the treetops. They're small, have an olive green back, yellow on the face, as well as black on the face with dark side streaking and two white wing bars. You can see the stripes on the sides of the wing. Interestingly, the oldest Townsend's warbler lived to be 10 years old. Their song is a series of squeaky and buzzy notes that rise up. Here's what they sound like. The common yellowthroat, despite its name, is also a warbler. This species usually arrives in late April and inhabits the marshes, wetlands, and lakes of Victoria. They're a local yet common breeder, and the males are olive yellow with a bright yellow throat, black mask, and have a white border around the mask. They're often very secretive, but you can easily hear their songs around lakes. Their song is a repetitive series of phrases, often saying, witchity, 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 or we beat you, we beat you, we beat you. Here's what it sounds like. Arriving in mid-April, the chipping sparrow is one of Victoria's most abundant breeding birds. They usually prefer Gary Oak Meadows and other dry open woodland habitats. They're very small, have a long tail, well-streaked back, rufous cap, dark eye line, and have a pale belly. It's one of Victoria's smallest sparrows. Their song is a long, almost insect-like trill that echoes out. Here's what they sound like. The warbling vireo is yet another common spring migrant we see here in Victoria. Usually preferring deciduous woodlands and any sort of cottonwoods, this species can be found around lakes. Overall, they're fairly small, have an olive back, pale belly, white eyebrow, silverish bill, and bluish legs. The oldest known warbling vireo lived to be 13 years old. Their song is a rapid, bubbly, yet variable warble. Often, you can hear these species before you actually see them. Here's what they sound like. The Pacific Slope Flycatcher is another one of Victoria's breeding birds. An uncommon breeder, this species arrives in early May and inhabits conifer-dominant forests around lakes and hills of Victoria. They are small, have a white eye ring, olive yellow plumage, two wing bars, and a dark upper side and an orange underside to the bill. They're more often heard than seen. They live way up in the canopy and they're very hard to spot. Their song is a quick and pleasant series of whistle-like calls. 
Here's what they sound like. The Swainson's thrush is one of the last to arrive in Victoria for the summer. They're a common local breeder found in large wooded areas across Victoria. Their medium size, long legs, slender body, brownish back, spotting on throat, and white underside help you tell them apart from other species of birds. Their song is characterized by an upward rising melody, which almost sounds like a weird flute. I'm sure you've heard these guys while camping out near Souk or Machosan. Take a listen. The final common spring migrant I'll be talking about today is the black headed grosbeak. This species usually arrives around the beginning of May and is uncommon around Victoria in the spring and summer. They prefer mixed habitats around wetlands and lakes, so areas with willows, deciduous, and conifers all in one spot can be good places to look for them. They're medium in size, have a very large thick bill, a black head, orange belly, chest, and neck, an orange lower back, and black and white wings. You'll also notice the belly has some yellow on it. Their song is very robin-like, except for it's more whistly, variable, and longer. It almost sounds like a robin had music lessons. Not only do we get to see common birds in Victoria, but sometimes we'll also get some rare ones each spring. Between the months of June and April, these birds show up unexpectedly and can be a real treat to see. Most of them breed in the interior of BC, but others breed in Eastern Canada. An example of one of these rare species that could show up is the Bullock's Oriole. Between the end of May to the beginning of June, we usually see a few of these. They're actually a rare breeder here in Victoria. Generally though, they're found commonly in the interior of BC, like Penticton, Kelowna, and the Kootenays. Lazuli buntings are another kind of bird we have a chance of seeing here. Usually they're found in the interior of BC, but occasionally each spring between mid to late May, a few of them show up here in Victoria. Gary Oak Meadows and places such as Uplands Park and Mount Talmy are good places to look for them. The two photographs on the right are two that I photographed here last year. The bottom one was from Uplands Park and the top one was from Mount Talmy. Males are small in size, have a small black and silver bill, blue back and head, orange chest, white belly, and two distinct wing bars, the two white stripes on the side of the wing. The yellow-headed blackbird is another rare species that could show up here in the spring. Usually, between April to June, there are a few of these that show up here in Victoria. Generally, these sightings are around wetlands, marshes, and farm fields. Males of this species are medium in size, have a large black bill, have a bright yellow head with black around the eyes, and have white wing patches. The last bird I'll mention is the chestnut-sided warbler. Unlike the oriole, bunting, and blackbird, this bird breeds in eastern Canada and parts of the US. It's an extremely rare visitor here in Victoria, but when one does show up, it's usually between late May and June. These are six great locations in Victoria where you can go see some of these spring migrants right now. Places like Swan Lake, Panama Flats, Mount Talmy, Uplands Park, Elk Lake, and Esquimalt Lagoon will all have these interesting, cool, and lovely species. If you're wanting to learn more about birds or go on any bird walks, you can contact one of these three groups, the Victoria Natural History Society, the Rocky Point Bird Observatory, or Swan Lake Nature Sanctuary to learn more. You should definitely check out Rocky Point Bird Observatory. It's an awesome place to take your family. You can see wild birds up close, both songbirds and owls. Their goal is to monitor bird migration through the fall between July and October. Two more resources are eBird and the Merlin Bird ID app. eBird is a database full of information about birds around Vancouver Island, BC, and even the rest of the world. I hope you enjoyed this presentation about spring migration in and around Victoria, BC. Now it's time to get out there to explore the hills, forests, marshes, and lakes of Victoria to see what you can find with your family.